If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, Ooh, hey. we start out by talking to, uh, to Doug about his six-week transformation strategy. Ooh, you know, the great reveal. There's a lot of talk about how, you know, is Sal going to win? Is Adam going to win? Is Justin going to win? <laughs> People forget. There's not a lot of talk, man. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty obvious. loaded over here. It's pretty yeah. obvious. Yeah, right, right, right. A lot yeah. of shit talk, I should say. Crazy. But uh, what a lot of people don't realize is Doug is, uh, that guy's fucking disciplined as hell. He's the silent assassin. Yeah, so we talk about that in this part of this episode. Then we have a nice discussion around NEAT. NEAT stands for non-exercise no, we had a neat discussion about activity NEAT. thermogenesis. So we talk about that and uh, really good, really, really good conversation. You're going to hear that part of this episode. We talk about activity and mood, how activity affects your mood and how that becomes a self-feeding cycle. Uh, we talk about the difference between knowledge and wisdom. Mm. There is a big difference. We talk about where fitness studies fail, what went into the creation of MAPS Anabolic. This is when I, I came up with some of the concepts and how I sent the program to Adam. We talked about it and all this other stuff. So he was learn, sober for that one. Learn the history of uh, how MAPS Anabolic got started. And how to create long-term, sustainable progress uh, with your workouts. I also want to mention that at the airing of this episode, there's only two days left for one of the biggest promotions we've done this year. 50% off MAPS Anabolic, the foundational program. Great program for building muscle, building strength, and also for speeding up your metabolism, If you're, especially if you have a damaged metabolism and want to reverse that. MAPS Anabolic, great program. Half off, so it's under $60.00. You can find it at mindpumpmedia.com. On that site, we also have bundles where we combine multiple MAPS programs together for specific goals. For example, our super bundle is designed to get you from here to the end of the year, at least for 365 days, have all your workouts planned out for you. You can find all of our bundles and here the MAPS Anabolic. Here to next year. Yeah. I like that. I like that one. Yeah, yeah. And the 50% off MAPS Anabolic, all at mindpumpmedia.com. Doug, we haven't. We've we've all talked a lot about our uh, how we've approached this six week contest. How's your progress going? What are you doing? Yeah, or did you give up already? <laughs> Get us up to speed, Listen, Dougie. I have just started. Really. Listen, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I know Doug very well, and uh, he's quietly competitive. Yeah. I, I'm very. I haven't bought. I haven't bothered him at all, or said anything or nothing, because I know what this fucker's capable of. I've seen him. <laughs> yeah, I've seen him. So what do you? So what's going on? What are you doing? So I'm following Maps Anabolic. Mm. The first. Two weeks are going to be, since it's a six-week period of time, the first two weeks are going to be phase one. The second two weeks, three weeks will be phase two, and then the final week will be phase three. Smart. Mm -hmm. Very smart. What about nutrition? Yeah, you know, I was doing the intuitive thing for the first few days, and then I realized I'm going to need to really get a real handle on my food intake. Right. So I started tracking yesterday. Mm, what are you hitting? Yesterday it was about eighteen hundred calories. Oh, low! Is that was that a normal day of eating for you? Is that about what you think you? I know uh, I was I was careful with my eating. A couple of things I do every day is I weigh myself and then I put a tape around my midsection mm -hmm. just to see what's going on with that. And I was noticing I wasn't really moving on the scale or as far as my waist circumference was concerned, I wasn't moving on that either. Mm. So I thought, well, I better start tracking this and really making sure that the calorie intake is down. What do you think about your your movement since you've been? doing mind pump are you you think you're less active or more active definitely less active are you it's for, for sure, sure. For i don't sure. do any cardio yeah and my walking is pretty much limited to walking the dog mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's the biggest challenge that i find doing this job compared to Same. Th things i've done yep. before is that you know as a as a trainer you're moving all the day yeah all you're, day. you're taking weights racking weights yeah that i mean that yeah, adds constant. adds up so much and so to switch lifestyles to a you know talking on the fucking podcast all day long and sitting doing youtube or being on your phone all day that really has changed it's changed how i have to go you know after goals like this it's mm -hmm. completely different yeah because i used to when i train clients all day long i was on my feet all day long and i'd walk back and forth and it's not a lot but it's more than what we're this doing is now. very common yeah. that this is what a lot of people get stuck at when you know i don't know how many clients i had like this where you know, i don't know what happened all of a sudden i got older and i just start putting weight on them and then i start backtracking like they're well, listen, dude, you, you were in college. You're eating you were, like you did when you were... Yeah, when you were 25 yeah. and you were still like school and you had a job that was mm -hmm. active and you were doing active things. And then people don't realize how much 
like neat, really, really matter. I didn't as a trainer for many years. I'd oh, never, yeah. co- I never coached to that. By the way, I do want to uh, um, address something with that. So somebody tagged. Did you get guys get tagged on Instagram on that? What that dude was saying about neat? How no. how they're trying to define it? And Lane, when we had Lane here on our podcast, he said the same thing. I thought it was interesting. They're trying to define neat as all of the activity you do that doesn't include walking yeah. or move that like that's the te- it's just fidgeting it's the, it's the technical term for it it is and and i, I want to be clear the reason why we include steps with that is how do you track the other ways that you move yeah, yeah. you know tracking how your steps is the easiest way that we have currently and it's the closest thing to the real actual neat yeah. right yeah because like, otherwise we can just sit like, there and like, like fidget like, more right right yeah. well, exactly walking is you know, you're not burning that many more calories walking than you are fidgeting or tapping your foot or yeah, what, whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, no, the technically, which this this is the thing that always cracks me up. Yep, about same it. technicalities. People are so funny. It's like yeah, it's, they it's hold not, on to that shit. Th- that's not neat. It's like, uh, okay, look, <sighs> I, I've been training people for a long time. I know yeah. exactly what's going to be effective, how to communicate mm, it, right? And how the fuck do you communicate to a client? Yeah. We F- need to fidget more. Yeah, we need to increase your knee. <laughs> oh, you want me to get up and move more? No, 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 no. That doesn't count as knee. What I want you to do is non-exercise f- activity yeah. thermogenesis. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. to me, that's unplanned movement. Exactly. Otherwise, like, like, it- let's keep it to that. Like your fucking crazy definition that you want to make sure yeah. is like super specific. Yeah. Otherwise, oh, what are you gonna do? Blink is irrelevant. More? Yeah, blink your eyes more and talk more and move your fingers more. Yeah, yeah. So, that's what counts. So technically, silly. yeah. So technically, it's not the definition, of, but that's no. how I that's how I've taught and spoke to clients for. God Dude, knows how it's long. crazy yeah. though when you have people track their steps because that's the most that's the most accurate thing we have to measure activity. We don't have anything that measures fidgeting and all that stuff. Uh, at least at least nothing that you can use on on your own or buy at the store. But I'll have people track their steps, three thousand in mm-hmm. a day, mm-hmm. three thousand steps. Sad. That bro, is bro. Average American is way four, low. Bro. bro, that you know what that is, right? That's getting up out of bed, walking downstairs. Eating breakfast, walking back upstairs, getting dressed, getting in, getting your in car, the car, parking driving, close. Yeah, walking yeah. to your office, sitting down, working all day, getting up, walking to your car, driving home, walk. That's all it is. Yeah. It's literally going from one from sit, here to there, one sit station to another. Well, yeah, that's what blew my mind. I remember the first time when I first started tracking all that stuff, realizing that holy cow, like my average client's only stepping about four thousand steps. And if I just go walk over to the treadmill and literally put it on a speed two and a half to three, which is it was like a slow walk. Yeah, it's a stroll. Yeah, it's a really – I could text on my phone and write while I'm yeah. doing that, right? That in a, in a half hour's time, you'll surpass that. That's mm-hmm. crazy. That's fucking – All day. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. You know, that's – and it makes you feel – people don't realize – here's a here's an interesting thing too is when you're in something long enough and consistent enough, you stop realizing – you stop realizing how shitty you feel or how it's affecting you because you're always in it. You're mm-hmm. in it so often, so much, you get used to it, so you don't have a contrast. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So when you're that inactive all day long, you don't realize how it makes you feel depressed mm-hmm. or anxious or foggy-minded or how it increases cravings for- Irritable. Yeah, irri- or cra- it increases cravings for foods that cause a spike in dopamine and serotonin like- sugars and processed carbohydrates because if you're sitting there and you're what feeling- a great what a great point right there you're making oh that's that's, that's so you gotta elaborate on that because that is so true anybody who's ever been on or off a diet and been consistent about things like that knows that it's it's so ironic that when you're actually training hard and being active and moving it's easier to stay away from bad foods mm-hmm. when and- you could actually technically get away with these higher calorie foods are the times when you don't, and the times when most people choose to are at the worst times. There's a lot behind that. Part of it is the psychological. We have our comfort foods and things, and we don't realize that we reach to them because we feel mm. flat. Or And it doesn't have to be like this dramatic depression. When I say depressed, I don't mean you're like clinically depressed. What I mean by that is take what your healthy baseline is and you're depressed below that. That's what I mean. So you're not like the super sad person, but you are in this kind of depressed state because you haven't been moving all day long. And what you don't realize is that you will instinctually reach for foods that will elevate certain 
neurotransmitters like dopamine and serotonin to make yourself feel a little better. Right. Part of that psychological because you have your emotional connection to them. And part of them is physiological. Because they do provide those. They like, do. You, you get a nice dopamine hit like after, oh, that's satisfying. And then you get this rush of like uh, euphoria almost for just a, a split second. Dude, you rely on caffeine and sugar and, 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 and starches because starches fuel serotonin. Sugar does the same thing, but also with dopamine and caffeine is dopamine. So what you see, the cycle is inactive all day long, lots of coffee, sugar, processed carbohydrates, and people are, and then at night, something to depress them even more so they can go to sleep, like yeah. alcohol or whatever. And it's this cycle, and then you live in this cycle for so long. And then that becomes- That's your normal. Uh, yeah. And so when you ask somebody how they feel, they think they feel great. That's why. I yeah. feel fine. I feel fine. This feel is totally fine. This is why- That's when because you've never felt great. Well, yeah. Right. You haven't actively tried. I, I definitely can voice into this because of the noticing how little we move now, like with, with this job you know, transition, and then like actively trying to- uh, accomplish more things around the house. Like I was power washing my house. I was, you know, trimming everything out. Like I'm like motivated to go outside, do things, be active, like accomplish tasks. And it builds momentum. Every single time I do it, it builds even more charge, more momentum, more energy. And mm -hmm. that just cascades into the rest. Of also think about it this way too. When you're in a state of without realizing, you don't even have to be conscious of it. But when you're in this kind of flat state, because you're not moving, you're, and as a result, you're reaching for these foods, which create more ups and downs. You feel crappy. You might not have a contrast. So you don't necessarily realize it, but you still feel crappy. And so what do you do when you feel like you're in a kind of crappy mood or, or kind of a down situation? What do you do? You want to distract yourself from it. You want to remove yourself from it. And so then you end up going on your phone or your computer, social media. And this is when you start losing hours of the day. Hmm dedicated to shit like Instagram, Facebook, and mindless internet searching. because And it's a cycle. It's the cycle of, you know, feeling like shit, trying to eat to make yourself feel better, not really realizing what you're doing, but you're still doing it, and then distracting yourself. Now, when you get up and move and do things, well, you're not distracted. You're actually focused. When you're power washing the house or when I'm doing something and I'm actually trying to do something in the backyard or I'm trying to go somewhere and go on a walk, you're not distracted. You're actually present. You're moving, so that makes you feel better. And because you feel better, you don't necessarily reach for the foods that you are going to give you that quick fix. So it's this, it really feeds into itself and people get stuck in this cycle and they stay in it for mm. so long. This is why when I coach people, it's funny, well, I'll coach people and then they'll, they'll be more active, they'll eat better, and then they'll have a weekend or something where they yeah. go off a little bit or they don't do anything all day long and they'll tell me like, oh man, I feel terrible. Like I used to do that all day long and it didn't bother me. I'm like, that's not true. Hmm. The only reason why you're realizing it now consciously is you yeah. have a contrast. Right. Because you were feeling so much better before and now you're like, whoa, this feels terrible. One of the benefits of having kids is I can, it's hard to observe yourself, right? It's very difficult to observe things within yourself because you're in it. Mm -hmm. But when you have kids, it's easier because you can, I, and kids are very, Kids have less filters. Like they don't necessarily. Yeah, they're understand. not trying to put a facade on for you. Like yeah. they're going to be who they are, and they're going to let things affect them. Whatever. They don't realize, like, oh, I'm not as self-aware. Yeah, like, okay, I, I'm going to act moody or cranky or whatever, you know. So I better not act that way because there's all these people around me. They just do it, yeah. and I can clearly see, like, my kids during the day and during the summer, right? They, if they're not in the camp, then they go to mm -hmm. grandma's house or grandpa's house. Now, <clears throat> my ex-wife's dad old school Italian guy and uh, you know his, his wife died years ago this was my, my ex-mother-in-law and he doesn't know really what to do with kids doesn't know how to feed them he ends up just taking them somewhere to eat doesn't really know what to do he was just kind of raised that way so when my kids go there they just go on their computers and devices all day and he does his stuff in the backyard and that's yeah. his way of taking care <laughs> of them right? right what a contrast when I go pick up my kids it's like I'm picking up two yep. cranky zombies yeah. <laughs> when I go pick, it's literally when I pick them up, it's two cranky zombies. And I know why it's because they were sitting down, not moving all day long, not interacting yep. on their devices for seven hours or eight hours. And when I do that and I take them, it takes me like an hour to get them out of that state. So I take them home. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to go outside. Then I have to fight them to go outside because the last thing you want to do when you feel shitty is get up and move. You mm -hmm. just want to stay in that state, right? It's, it's, like I said, it's, it feeds itself. Which is why I love to coach to neat or coach to walking, whatever yes. you want to technically call it, mm -hmm. because it's 
it's not that much effort to do that. And and it's but it's still challenging to motivate somebody in that state. It's extremely oh, hard, yeah. mm-hmm. and it's even harder to motivate them. You got to go to the gym and kill it or that's, crush it. That's like, mu- that's not a li- That's a harder lifestyle uh, yeah. and behavioral change. An easier behavioral change is monitor your activity throughout the day and try and increase the amount of steps that you do throughout the day. Yeah. So now I have the autonomy to manage my daily activity level. And as I'm doing it, I'm working it into my my daily life. And that is a much more effective way of manipulating or modifying my long-term behavior versus take out 30 minutes out of the day or an hour out of the day to go do scheduled cardiovascular activity. Like one of the things one of the things I love most about resistance training, this is I used to sell personal training this way, and it's true, it's hundred percent true. What I love most about resistance training is you don't need to do it all the time. Like you don't need to do a lot of it. For it to be effective for the average person, if I took the average person off the street who just wants to get fit, stronger, be able to move better, I can do a lot with two days a week. Right. I don't, you know, I'm talking about people who aren't trying to get super ripped or muscular, just want to get stronger, feel better, be more fit, speed up their metabolism. I could do a lot with two days a week. Other than that, the daily day-to-day activity is very, very important. And my options are schedule cardio every day yeah. or let's change your daily behavior. And NEAT is by far a more effective long-term strategy. Well, I, I think that's why we always voice it so much because I remember when we talked about motivation and we you know there was a little bit of push against because a lot of people really do seek motivation mm-hmm. and they seek other people, what other people are doing and um, you know they want to feed off that energy. They want that to kind of be the catalyst and get things moving and because they're thinking too, too much. They're thinking they have to accomplish too much, like right out of the Mm -hmm. gates, where if we can get you to think of something that like you barely even notice that makes a humongous impact, that's what's going to create these momentum builders. Absolutely. Imagine, imagine waiting till you were motivated to take a shower or brush your teeth. Imagine if that, if you just sat down and you're like, I'm not motivated. I got to wait for the motivation. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like you do it. Some stank ass breath. You don't get motivated to brush your teeth. You just do it. It's just part of your day. And so when you incorporate it into your day that way, uh, you know, your neat and your activity, it beca- it's a much more effective way to change your lifestyle. And it's just, it, it just meshing into your daily life. So what ends up happening is I'll have clients who will say things like, oh, uh, I find myself doing more chores now because I'm yeah. more aware of, because that's what it is. Rather than aimlessly getting on a machine and pedaling away or walking away, it's like, okay, you know, Sal told me to watch my steps and I'm only hitting 3,000. Right. He wants me at 6,000. And I needed to clean the garage out anyways. Or exactly. I needed, right. It's like, I needed to do this stuff anyways. Like, oh, this gives me a good excuse to make sure I do and it. And that's lifestyle. Yeah, right. Now you're getting, finding purpose behind it. Like Justin, doing all the shit around the house. Not only were you active, but you also mm-hmm. have the dual benefit of feeling like purposeful. Yeah, you accomplish something, man. You get a lot of uh, whatever. I don't know if it's like euphoria or like what a good word is for that, but basically, like you just feel great. Like you feel like things are working, you know, and moving forward, and and I'm contributing. And uh, you know, I, I think about my family and how to, how to benefit them. It's like, <laughs> why wasn't I doing this before? It's mm-hmm. because I was. You know, I was I was trying to kind of manage that. Like it was more like I was at like maintenance, I'm managing versus like being ahead, being active, doing things that are actively contributing. And then the kids see what you're doing. You know, like my wife sees what I'm doing, and it's all for the positive. While you're, you know, actually benefiting, contributing to your physique and your yeah. body, and and simultaneously, you know, and ironically spreading activity out through, if you're just looking at calorie burn, like if we're just looking at cardio and we just want to burn calories, we're not necessarily sending a signal. That's the part that pisses me off is this is where people get into this debate about this shit is that it's, oh, you know, like if you do it, if we do a heads up study, you know, on, you know, cardio versus walking all the time, like the cardio is going to win for fat burning, like from study to study, if you're, if you're. Well, if you look at time spent, but here's a funny thing with studies, because they've done this, they've taken groups and they've said, this group over here does an hour of cardio every day. This group over here does two minute, 30, uh, two 30 minute sessions a day, so same total time. And this group over here does three 20 minute sessions. Guess which ones burn the most body fat? Yeah, the 320s. Yeah. That's right. Yep. So, so, problem so, is, no one's going to do 320. And here's the thing but the need is spread out. Right. And I, don't need, and I don't need a study to tell me this. I've been training in people for so long that mm-hmm. I know what is obtainable for people and I know what's realistic to, to sustain. Mm-hmm. Like, I, there's certain things that. You know, people can keep up forever, and very few people 
can make doing you know a half hour hour run every single day or cardio every single day part of their lifestyle mm-hmm. and who the fuck would want to anyways mm-hmm. like it's just not it's not real. unless you really find the benefit in right. taking the time aside if, and you and, enjoy that now yeah, that's yeah, yeah, totally yeah. right and there's nothing wrong with that and there's and and when i have that client in front of me it's a different conversation mm-hmm. but you know a lot of the information that we provide on on the show and and the youtube it's it's a collection of our experience and what works with with the average person because that's what we're used to dealing with. I get really annoyed when we get into these stupid debates with other wannabe professionals who've just started being a trainer or think they know a bunch of shit. Like the other day on the my YouTube video, we're talking about bicep curls and somebody's getting technical about how the shoulder is part of the- Oh, the, how the bicep does a little uh, flexion of the shoulder. Yeah, right. Yeah. And the idea is I'm trying to teach people good mechanics on a bicep curl, and one of the most common mistakes is the rocking of the shoulder and the elbow. I mean, when you look at a bicep curl mm-hmm. on 80% of the people that are in the gym that really don't understand mm-hmm. mechanics- yeah, You've gone too far at that yeah, point. Yeah, they, they're rocking the shit out of it. Now, does that mean that like it's bad, it doesn't work? It's No, it doesn't mean any of those things. It just means like if I can teach some good habits right. of keeping their, uh, them, them in a position, does that mean it? And then you had somebody who wants to argue and debate like well technically yeah, biomechanically speaking the bicep yeah. inserts that you know what's funny about that i love that uh, that you're saying this by the way who was i think it was paul check that said knowledge uh, or information plus experience equals wisdom yes right i know i was gonna so, go this route too. right so so adam, adam you're on that youtube channel and you are teaching based off of wisdom wisdom you know the biomechanics Earned yes. knowledge. you know the science right but you've also trained thousands of people over two decades yeah. so you know you have wisdom and the wisdom says this if I teach people to do a curl, applied knowledge. Yeah, if I teach people to do a curl and flex at the shoulder, because that is technically part of the bicep function. It's a secondary function, really, but it's kind of part of its function because the bicep tendon goes over the shoulder. Here's what's going to happen: shitty form, bicep tendon inflammation. So right. my wisdom tells me, right? Don't teach people to do it that right. way. And the shoulder ends up taking more of the movement because yeah, yeah. now you're thinking about do that and you're actually encouraging them. Right, right, right. It's right, just right. like, dude, don't, I don't want to get into semantics with you. And it's crazy because I still preface it with right. it's impossible to isolate a part of, part of muscle yeah. and still well, you get well, yeah, knuckle it's going to isometrically be contracting anyway through right. the process. But that's that's all little semantics that you want to get hung like, up. Get on. out of here with yeah. that bullshit. <laughs> you're not you're not helping the people that are reading and watching this anymore by trying oh. to debate something like that or that you. You're teaching a technique that is sound. Right. Yeah, that's yeah, it. yeah. And that's and again, that's just that experience. And I think when we when we communicate things, that's what's the most important thing because you know you know what works and what determines what's if something works. Like you, t- you take a bunch of people, you know, you train a bunch of clients. What determines whether something works? Was well, a few components. One of the components is efficacy. So the most is this thing that I'm teaching effective. It needs to be effective. Not the most effective. Not necessarily, but it needs to be effective. But we also have to look at other factors that we have to add into that. For example, how likely is it that the person's going to do this? Number that's that's one of the things. So right. efficacy. How efficacy. likely is it that they're going to do this? What are the behaviors that we've noticed in clients when we've tried to communicate this? And what has worked for people long term? These are all and what has it? What, what, what are order, common mistakes? Yeah, right? What order you'd put it in? Too. Yeah. So like I can look at the most efficacious application of cardio, and I can say, I can say because of the studies and science, hey, if you wake up at five a.m. on an empty stomach and go do hit cardio, you're going to burn the most body fat. But I know through experience, you're going to fizzle out quick. Most people aren't going to do that. And if they do, they're going to burn out and it's not going to be something you're going to do long term. So that actually makes it less effective. So I'm going to communicate it in a way or, or I'm going to deliver that message in a way or I'm not going to deliver that message. I'm going to deliver a different message like this. Hey, the time of day and whether or not you ate before cardio really doesn't matter. What's more important is what you prefer. Pick the time that you prefer and right. pick how you feel before cardio – Pick yeah. what you prefer Where's and then your do it most that consistent way. Hour? And then Where do it that, that way. Lie? That's right. it. And right. so that's where that, you know, kind of comes from. And it's funny too. It's like when, you know, even with our programs and how we write them out, you know, this is what we this is what we put behind the programs that we write. Is what's the most effective? Oh, we ping pong all these variables right. with every single like decision that we make in the process of building things from phase one through whatever phase and how many and what we're trying to determine will lead them to this very specific uh, you know attribute 
uh, the most sound way that where mm. it's like, you know, it's, it, we're considering safety. We're considering, um, you know, what, what to put in front of the other, uh, which tempo to use. Like there's just there's so many different variables that, you know, I would love to discuss a lot of these variables just to give people to kind of peer yeah. into a little bit of the process well, so just, and think sustainability. Like, that's, like that's you could take, one. you could take a, you could argue and say like, let's put maps and a ball since that's the foundation and that's what Sal originally created. And this is what was so brilliant about it. I remember when he first shared it with me, I was like, you're you're right. Like I could take a six day a week of program that's a split that I've put a bunch more volume in into the workouts and put them up heads, to, you know, heads up and say, hey, in in four weeks time, this one could outperform this program. But the reality of it is very few people consistently month in year out train six days a week or more and can maintain that high of a volume on the body. So what we know from experience is that 90% of the people that are coming in here that are trying to learn how to train their body properly are way better off following something that's more of a three day a week routine that touches all the muscles. So a full body type of workout, because that's something that's realistic, even on a busy week, even if you traveled, even if you did some things, you could still keep up that program, which we know, and we've said this a million times, is that an inferior program done consistently is far better than a superior program done inconsistently. That's right. And even and then we, of course, the trigger sessions are thrown in there for people who are the super right. uh, consistent, I'm going to do this thing every day. And then, of course, watch. It's funny. I just got uh, a met. So I was on uh, Max Lugavere's podcast, and I got some messages from people who listened to that podcast. And, you know, I had a couple... Uh, uh, people contact me. One of them was this young lady. And she says, she says to me, you know, I, I'm stuck at, you know, 18% body fat. I can't get leaner. Um, you know, I liked what you said on, on Max's podcast. Like, what do you think I should do? So I said, okay, well, what's your routine look like now? And how many calories are you eating? She's eating 1500 calories a day. She's doing two soul cycle Wow. Classes a week plus so a Pilates super class. Restricted calories. Yeah. Super plus plus a Pilates class. Yeah. Plus she's doing circuit training yeah. throughout the week. And that's her weight training. She's right. That's right. her weight training. Now, yeah. when we're as we're talking about it, she's like, Well, I mean, studies show that hit training and circuit training is more effective for fat loss. And and I'm doing all the things that are effective for fat loss. I said, Yes, science will show that in a six week or ten week right. period or even twelve week period. That is going to be more effective for right. fat loss. However, you've been doing this for a very long time, and now you're at the point because you've you're been hammering. Very adapted. Well, and you've hammered this for so long that now doing all that activity, you're only consuming 1,500 calories, and you can't get leaner. Where do we go from here? I said, yeah. we need to build the base and strengthen your body and build your metabolism. And so I recommended MAPS Anabolic, and here's what's going to happen if she follows through with my advice. She's going to follow MAPS Anabolic, and I told her slowly cut out and cut down all that crazy intensity stuff. I told her cut out the, the circuits right now, leave in the soul cycle, but cut that out eventually as well because I don't want a huge rebound. Slowly increase your calories. Here's what's going to happen. Her body weight's not going to change. Nothing's going to change except she's going to get stronger and she's going to be able to eat more calories. After about anywhere between, depending on how, how good and healthy her body is, between four to eight weeks... She's going to see that her calories are up by a few hundred calories, if not more, every day with less intense activity. She's going to be stronger. She's going to be more sculpted. And then when she's going to cut her calories, boom, right. her body's going to get lean yep. and she's going to feel amazing. But people don't communicate this and the studies don't necessarily show this because studies are, they're short. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? And I know this when I, look, when I, when I, you know, put together MAPS Anabolic, I looked at it and I said, okay, how, can I, can I create a program that in theory, people based on my experience and based on science, that people will be able to go through the full thing, which is if you do pre-phase, it's 12 weeks. If you don't do pre-phase, it's nine weeks. But who will be able to go through, learn about their body, be able to modify it, and theoretically be able to cycle through that program indefinitely and get close to reaching their genetic potential? Because that's always the goal. The goal is if you look at your ultimate genetic potential of fitness, strength, muscle, your ability to lose fat, all that stuff, you may have a limit, right? A, a genetic limit. Most of us don't even come close to that because of all the variables like our sleep, our training, is it good, is it, is it not good, our food, all that stuff. This is where, this is where studies go wrong for us is they, they control for all these variables that the average human doesn't. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, okay, well, when, when everything is all equal, mm -hmm. this type of cardio could be better or this type of training or this type of eating could be better for you. But the problem is what we know is that most people fuck up all those other variables yeah. that potentially really affect 
what this whole study is trying to prove. So this is where I Dude. I get frustrated with studies because people hang on to like the details of them and they argue and debate them. And right. it's like, well, technically that girl was doing all the stuff that the study said she should do. Right. right? Like here, here's a good example. And those are usually with athletes in these studies. Dude, like, for here, the most part. here's a great example. Uh, a study will show that doing hardcore sprints for 15 minutes is going to burn more body fat than just increasing your steps and doing more neat throughout the day. Now, if I took 100 people off the street who wanted to get in shape, how many of them, what percentage of them do, would you prescribe hardcore sprints 15 minutes? Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. 10%, maybe well, 5%. If, if that, yeah. Maybe. First off, people can't sprint without hurting themselves. Uh, it's, it's, it's recipe for disaster That's immediately. Right. And second of all, if they could sprint, they probably have so much stress in their life anyway or lack of sleep or whatever, yeah. that throwing super intense stuff is going to cause them to burn out like in four weeks. Right. You see what I'm saying? So that's... So when I put the program together, I said, okay, can I design something that people can effectively cycle through and modify as they learn their own body, but always be able to continue doing that? Could you go through a phase one, two, and three? Could you change your trigger sessions? And will this is this something that you can do theoretically indefinitely and get your body to continue to progress? And the answer is is yes. The other thing I did when I did when I put that together is I I had to, I had to decide where do I put the phases? You have your heavy training a phase one, you have your moderate reps of phase two and your higher reps and supersets of phase three. And I could have put the phases in, in lots of different directions. And I thought to myself, the average person that's going to get this program is going to have some experience in the gym. It's not necessarily for beginners, although I did, uh, I did control for that by putting pre-phase in there. So, but the average person is gonna be like, okay, I've worked out before I work out a little bit. Like which phase is going to be the one to cause the most change to take them out of what they're probably doing the most of? Well, that's phase one. Yep. Most people are probably stuck in the 8 to 15 rep yeah. range and doing the traditional. So I put phase one first, and I knew that the phase two would follow best, and then phase three is something that you know would be a great way to finish up on. And I put pre-phase for people who I thought to myself, okay, but a lot, some people are not going to be prepared yeah. to train in that one to five rep range. What do I do for those people? I put pre-phase in there. Yeah, you, and even yeah, that phase one is super intimidating for your average person because you, I mean you're relying on now loading a substantial amount of weight to be able to get the true benefit from it. But you have to have good mechanics. You have to know somewhat what you're doing. So that pre-phase is is a great addition. To I've it. also had messages from people who say, um, "Oh, studies show that phasing your workouts." throughout the week are more effective in studies. Like for example, instead of doing three weeks of a particular phase, three weeks of another phase, they'll say, oh, do one workout heavy during the week, do another workout that's lighter during the week and do it all in the same week. And here's again, where experience comes in. I know if I take the average person and I move them through low rep, heavy training, moderate and high rep all in the same week, that is a mind shift that's too fast. It changes the focus of the, you know, because there's a completely different It's mentality. also hard to tell what's really, your body's really responding And you don't to. know what's working. Yeah. You don't know exactly what's working. That's, yeah, that's another thing when you go to the studies where we talk about like the daily undulation and yes. stuff. It's like, okay, well, it shows that it's as good or more beneficial. Problem with that is though, and I remember, because I, that's how I trained. I used to, you know, I had, uh, did the whole muscle confusion, right? Where yeah. I was constantly, that's how as a kid, I was always trying different, different things, different, different things. And yeah, it, overall, I was in shape. But what I didn't, I hadn't, I wasn't learning my body. I wasn't learning like, hey, when I do this, this is how it responds, and when I do this, this is how that responds. Like, that's where the the benefits of following a phase for three or four weeks at a time, so you can really measure, like, oh wow, because here's the other variables that nobody talks about is, you know, all these with within all these phases different people are going to respond better to different phases. That's right. Mm -hmm. And this is it. So I always look at the way, and this is again, why I loved anabolic when you, when you first introduced it to me was it's not just giving you a, a badass program. It's, it's teaching you, it's teaching you how, and that was really the ultimate goal is that getting people to understand the things that really matter the most. And if you can go through these programs, you can also learn how to do it yourself. It's like the idea isn't that you have to rely on us for it. Just like when we used to train a client, like my goal always with the client was not that you would yes. have to rely on me to write your workout for the rest of your life. Like that used, I used to annoy me if a client would be like, oh, just tell me what to do. It's yeah. like, no, 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 no. Uh -huh. You're going to fucking learn this shit because you don't want to be yeah. dependent on jazzercise. Yeah. No, it's not. You're not going to be me just sitting here <laughs> randomly throwing things at because really if it's going to evolve and you're going to get better is you're really going to learn your body, how it responds, and you'll know even better than I do what works better for you. That's And that's the difference between 
I think between people who are writing workouts for people and just like here, follow this, follow. And a lot of programs are sold that way. Here's the workout. Here's the workout. Yeah. No, I want to write, and we do give you a workout. We do write it out for you. But the goal really is to get you to a point where you figure your body out, you can modify it, and, and which is happening, which is fucking exciting. It's very yeah. exciting for me to see in our forum. Oh, our forum is a, so. This oh, is why the forum is so it. rad because in the forum. And most of our OGs that have been around since they know. This is how I do. This is my version yeah, of Maps Anabolic, yeah. or here's how I do my programming. And yeah. I'm looking at the programs that these people are writing. And sometimes I'll help them and be like, okay, maybe you need to put this here or that yeah. there. But many times I look at it and I go, they're pretty intuitive. Yeah. I'm like, well, they fucking learn. They're starting to figure this out and they're able to do this for themselves. This is phenomenal. Now, the reason why a lot of people have trouble teaching that is because they're afraid they're going to lose a customer. Yeah. Like, they're afraid. Well, if I teach them how to, you know, do this, then they're never going to need me ever again. Yeah, I, scarcity. I, my twenty years as a trainer and your guys' same experience in, in this industry has proven otherwise. Right. Yeah. The reason why, uh, you know, I was as successful as I was as a trainer, and I know you guys were, is because we took a different approach. Yeah. Our approach was, I'm going to teach this person how to really be able to do this. You on build and establish their trust. Own. Mm-hmm. And, and that, that's the bottom line. It's like they trust you when when they know you have their best interest in mind. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not trying to get you to just run through the workout. That's right. You literally have to own the process and uh, ask questions and and you know like provide that feedback. We'll give you feedback as well, and it's all an open ended conversation the whole way through. Excellent. Did I tell you guys how I tested uh, Maps on a Bulk initially when I first created it? With clients, yeah. So, so w- here's what I did, right? So, I, I, I wrote the program, uh, and of course, it was a accumulation of knowledge, and you know, and it's not it, it, not breakthrough in the sense that it wasn't something that I, you know, I, it was a breakthrough. It was really accumulation of a lot of the knowledge I had through experience, and also through observing old school bodybuilder routines and strongman routines and all these other things. So, when I first created it, I thought to myself, okay, I need, I know it's going to work. For sure, but you always want to test it out. And I wanted to test it out to see, A, are people going to do it? How are they going to feel? What's their feedback? Like everything, right? So I looked for a beginner. I looked for someone who was an advanced age. I looked for someone who, uh, I looked for just the average Joe client. I looked for the bodybuilder and I found all those people. So I actually had, you know, I had a a female friend of mine, very experienced uh, figure competitor who's basically, you could say she's a bodybuilder. She just doesn't take steroids. So I had her test it. I had my client, Jim, who'd been working out for 30 years, fit, but he's also 70 years old. So I had him test it. Of course, I had Doug test it, who would be your more dedicated, you know, average person, right? Just regular dude, wanted to get fit, also dedicated, tested it on myself. And then I sent it to a bunch of friends and dudes that are kind of the younger guys who've been doing body part splits. And then I got my feedback and it was it was incredible. Every oh, then single- you also sent it to people like myself. Who- oh, I, what I wanted from you, because I knew, I mean, I knew you, I didn't know Justin at the time, but I knew you knew what you were doing. You've been doing this as long as I was, and I knew about your success. And so I'm like, I wanted you to look at it and see how how it was put together and how it was presented. And I wanted your opinion. So I specifically told you. I'm like, yeah. And one of the things that you haven't really touched on that I knew was so important, and because I had, I had fallen for the opposite trick as a trainer, I used to do the you know, come up with the most creative exercises, Mm -hmm. you know, like I was always writing programs. P90X approach. Right. I was always writing these programs that um, the way I would impress a client is I would teach them a movement that they had never seen before, Mm -hmm. you know, and then they would feel it from that and they would get sore from that. And then that, and so I was feeding into that when in reality, I wasn't teaching what was probably benefiting the majority of people's bodies. Now, it's not to say what I was doing wasn't helping people or wasn't changing their bodies too. And so that's where I got stuck in there for a long time because I was successful. And this was a, it wasn't until later in my career as a trainer did I really start looking at the programming and looking at what was really the best bang for the buck. And really, I noticed it because like Sal said, and I know he's the same way. I was t- training my clients really well, but I was training myself that way, you know, mm-hmm. doing all kinds of weird stuff all the time. But then I was like, if I stayed to the staple full body type of routines to the client two or three times a week, I'm like, man, their bodies are responding and changing. And, you know, it was those movements that I had been neglecting, like the squatting, like the deadlifting, like the overhead pressing, because you know what? They're fucking hard. <laughs> they're hard. Yeah. They're hard. They're hard to teach. They're hard to do. They're hard. They're hard to get up for. 
And it's much easier to sit on a machine or it's much easier to go do some fun, creative exercise that you're doing. But in reality, those are the ones that are really the biggest bang for the buck and that will, for the most part, really change somebody's physique because they're probably not doing those. And when I looked at it, I'm like, you know, it's great is the beauty within the program is its simplicity mm-hmm. in in the choices of exercises, which is remember when we first started, there would be like a little bit of a a pushback on that because people are still yeah. so trained. Oh, I know all those right. exercises. Yeah, they want something like they. Well, I hope it's you not know flashy them. enough. Yeah, yeah, right. It's like, oh, this is just squatting and deadlifting and overhead pressing and rowing and bench press. Like these have been around forever. Yeah. It's like there's a yeah. reason why. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. With the yeah. ones that work. Right. Yeah, it's funny too. You know, there was a uh, what was the program? Was it the um, oh, God? I can't remember. What's Ripito's program? Oh, starting, uh, starting strength. strength yeah. You know, starting strength was a program that still to this day has got lots of value, and that's why yeah. that right there it has staying power because he has people doing the most effective right. type of exercise. I remember when I, for me, it was just a, a mind blowing moment while I was training my clients, and I started to realize, like, wait a minute, I don't care who this person is, I don't care how old they are or how deconditioned they are. My goal is to get them to be able to do first to be able to do a squat, a deadlift, an overhead press, a bench press, a row, or whatever, basic movements. And then when they're able to do them, I can use other exercises and stuff to get them better to do the, to at those movements and get them stronger at those. And so I started applying that on my clients. And holy shit, the results, especially with my older clients, everybody got great, great results, but my older clients, fucking, their progress exploded. And I know why, it's because... Every trainer they'd been to before was afraid to have them even attempt to do some of these movements. Yeah. But now I got these 70-something-year-old clients who sometimes it would take me months or a year to even get them to attempt to do just the bar on a deadlift. But once we got to that point and then we started deadlifting and I started adding weight and I was very smart about it. Of course, I trained them appropriately. They would come to me and they'd be like, I've, I've never, I haven't felt like this for 20 years or... I can reach up above my head and grab a glass out of the cupboard or I can close the trunk or I walk up the stairs now without holding onto the railing. And I remember thinking like, and this is like after, literally, this would be after weeks of doing, of getting to the point where we could do squats and deadlifts. So as soon as I can get them to do those movements and we could add weight, it was like within a matter of weeks, they'd come to me and be like, uh, what the hell's going on with my body? Yeah. Like, well, we got you to the point now where you could do these fucking awesome movements. And that's why those are the staples in that type of a program, that's why we call it the foundational program or what, why we tend to oh, we, send people there. Yeah, we, we try really hard to not to stray away from those. That, I mean, we mm-hmm. basically call it the meat and potatoes of like, it's the bone structure of, mm-hmm. of the entire MAP system. And that's something that we, we make sure to stay true to because it's the further away you get from those very staple exercises that you mentioned, uh, you, by at that point, it's just like it, it gets away from you and it just becomes this sort of flash in the pan and, and fancy skilled type moves where, you know, what really works and what's going to drive your body forward the most, you know, that's that's always going to well, be the it needs, recipe. It needs to be the foundation. I mean, those are the those are the real foundational movements. And then I, and I was trapped in this where I was reading the magazines and reading what Ronnie Coleman was doing and, you know, all the guys and and they talk the, these guys talk all about the the little stuff, right? And how to like sculpt the physique and mm-hmm. working on these little muscles and doing these unique moves to target a part of it. Well, yeah, those guys have built a crazy foundation over the last 15 years plus yeah. of their life. And so they can look at these little movements that address that, that help shape and sculpt the body. And it absolutely does work and it's smart, but you can't do that without the foundation. You, you can't do that very successfully without the foundational movements, which is the the big gross motor movements that give you the biggest pain for no, your body. No, the foundation is so important. I mean, if you're, let's say you're a, a woman and you want to get leaner, and I say this because it's easier to communicate this to men, because if I tell guys, build muscle and strength, they're like, cool, I'll do that. But sometimes when I say this to women, it's, it, the, the, you know, the, the meaning is lost or whatever. So this is what I like to mm-hmm. communicate to them. It's like, look, do, would you like to be in a position where maintaining a lean physique requires less work, Mm-hmm. and where you can eat more and get away with eating more? And would you like to be in a position where your hormones feel balanced most of the time? Or, or at least you're not depressing your hormones or causing crazy imbalances because you're applying too much exercise or whatever. And the answer is yes. And then I tell them, okay, that's good. Now, sometimes we're going to throw in these advanced techniques. Sometimes we're going to throw in these crazy workouts. But for the most part, if that's where you want to be, focus on getting stronger, focus on the foundation, and focus on building a healthy, strong metabolism. That's what's going to give you 
what you're looking for. That's going to put you, and I've done this so many times with clients where they'll come to me, in particular female clients, where they're doing all this exercise, they're eating so low calories, their body's rebelling, they don't know what to do with it, and I tell them, give me six months, we're going to try and reverse ass and fix this. And then they come to me and they're like, this just happened recently. I had a client who I'm coaching right now who I've had to, every day I'm on text with her. Every single day I'm like consoling her, like, listen, I know right now you're eating more. I know you're not doing all the crazy cardio. I know I'm having you do all these heavy lifts and you're afraid of getting bulky. Trust the process. Trust the process. You know, this is what's going to happen. And, you know, she goes and weighs herself, you know, two months later and she texts me. She's like, I can't believe it. And I'm like, what? She's like, I lost two pounds. I didn't think I'd lose weight, not moving as much, eating more and fo- focus on lifting heavy. And I said, the funny thing is we're not even trying to get you to lose weight at all yet. That's not even the goal. That's happening because your metabolism's faster. I said, now forget all that. How do you feel? Oh, I have more energy. Uh, I sleep better. My libido's better. I don't have, you know, I don't feel like hormonal swings happen as often. I said, this is where you want to be. Now, when we want to get you leaner, we can use certain things to get you there, but how nice is it to be in the spot? And it's, we're only scratching the surface. We're only seeing the tip of the iceberg and that's where you want to be. And that comes from, when we talk about the context of modern life, that comes from building your metabolism through building muscle, increasing mobility through your strength. And it comes through working with those things in in appropriate ways long-term. That's where it comes from. Now, if you want to lose weight in, in three weeks, you want to get in shape in two weeks because you're going to Vegas, yeah, you throw in a bunch of hit crazy you know, cardio and restricting calories and all that stuff. I, understand, I get that. But you're going to be alive for a lot longer than two weeks. You're going to live with this body for a long time. Don't get stuck in that, that cycle because I promise you, you're going to end up six months, a year from now, two years from now going, why can't I lose a single pound even though I'm only eating 1,300 calories and I'm doing all this cardio? Mm-hmm. Or why do I feel so stressed out all the time? Why does my body feel squishy? Why am I just so frustrated? Why does it feel like I'm fighting my, my body? And the reason why is because you are. Well, what do you think is that? Why do you think is that is like what's the what's the number one reason why people fall into this trap? What do you think? I, I think the information mm-hmm. that they're getting is is I think if people communicated what we're doing right now and they heard it enough, I th- and they tried it, then it would start to become more popular. And I think it's starting to happen. But for come on, for the longest time yeah. when. I just th- yeah, I don't think people are informed. I don't no. think that they know there's more than one method to lose fat and well, lose weight. I try and I try and give people a little bit more credibility to that. And I think going through this six week thing that we're going through right now, the things that come to mind for me are just, you know, I, I even myself I struggle with the results not coming fast enough, or mm. you want you want to see this quick transformation mm-hmm. and. You know, when you're doing things really the right way, it really is very slow. Like yeah. if you if you are training correctly and you're eating correctly, there's not these huge swings in weight. There's not these huge physical changes in the mirror. It's very, very gradual and slow. You're slowly burning some fat and you're slowly building a little bit of muscle, which results in little to no movement on the scale mm-hmm. and very little change in, in the mirror. And it, and it takes time. So learning to trust the process i think is probably what i think is one of the number one things that people because even the people that like there's people there's people listening right now to this show that still struggle with this of course yeah. you but you could have listened no, to you're, you're absolutely right i mean it, we're conditioned for quick efficient quick efficient everything like technology is that's its entire mission is to make everything quick efficient and uh that way that like everything we do is is optimized like to to the nth level so you don't have to spend so much time to get the result of what you want and much much of life is you get what you put in where with fitness it's a little bit different yeah it's not about it's not an effort thing it's not like hey the harder i work and the more effort i put into this the more results i'm gonna get well maybe effort but effort shifted in a different direction it's not always physical effort or intensity some of that effort is mental discipline and consistency versus that but we well the work is the benefit right you know which is a hard hard concept to wrap your head around right because like me going in and putting in work oh my god that's a benefit to my body well i i think also the information i mean look for how long now when people the recommendations for activity are what 30 minutes of vigorous activity every single day what is the and what does that mean vigorous activity cardio right what is the uh the information that's been pushed forever about fat loss burn calories Burn as many calories as possible. Sweat, get sore, 
uh, you know, go running or, you know, you need to do that. I, I, I remember how many times have you had a client where you train them in the first session? They're like, I'm not even sweating that much. Are we doing anything? And it's like, yeah. we're doing a lot. Like that's not, that's not how you gauge. Guess what? You'll be ready for tomorrow too. Yeah. You know, the best way to gauge your progress is by your progress, it, not how hard it feels or how shitty you feel or any of that stuff. Gauge it by how you feel in a good way and also gauge it by your progress in the long term. Mm -hmm. Because, right, in the short term, we can get people lose. I can have someone lose five pounds in, in two days. That's not hard. Right. Two-day five-pound weight loss. Like You want a two-day program? Right. The funny shitty thing is I put out a program like that. I bet we'd sell a whole bunch of them. Well, look at it. <laughs> lose five pounds well, in two look, days. Well, look what happened with HIT. Yeah. I mean, HIT was, and we uh, knew it, which is why we waited as long as we did because it's, it's counter the message that we're trying to send to people. But we also know that there is a place for it. It is a very useful tool. So, of course... We're going to put it out there, yep. but you know, it, so many, I mean, you can't tell me that it being one of our number one selling programs isn't because that people are, are no. drawn to that. They're yeah. drawn to the, oh, it's two weeks and fast and hard and intense. Yeah. And it's like, it's unfortunate. Well, even strength training, like, like, let's look at it this way, right? Even with strength training, we've seen a research, a, a huge growth in people's interest in lifting weights. And a lot of that is the female consumer. Because they've now entered into the lifting weights market more than ever, and a lot of it's due to CrossFit. But even that, even that message is fucked kind, up. Yeah, because of it's it the is. it's the fucking go for it, balls to the wall, sweat your ass off, nonstop, you know, type of movement. It's like this. It's like what we always do as humans. We swung one way yeah. so hard, and then you swing the other way. And the the beauty is like you know, and and this is the po the positive side of CrossFit is it was it's getting people in the gym. Yeah, weights. it's getting people to go back. It's swinging the pendulum back to the right direction, right? Mm -hmm. It's like there's good exercises in there. Yeah, yeah, that's sure. what I mean. Like yeah. that's that's the good part about it is that it's it's swinging people away from this this silly bodybuilder. Everyone trying to be a bodybuilder when you have no business trying to be like a mm -hmm. bodybuilder because you're nowhere near that yet. That type of lifting or training, and you should be doing these types of movements. And so. You know, I could totally praise CrossFit, but like anything else, we swing one way really hard. Now we swing the other way, and that's what you're getting with the the wads and the mm -hmm. intensity and the and the reps to failure and mm -hmm. AMRAPs and stuff like that. Like, I, I think if we if we sell the message of speeding up your metabolism versus just trying to burn calories, if we sell that well enough, I think that message is going to spread, and I think people will start to get it. I really do because. It's it's an it's a good message and it's an easy one to communicate. Like I can tell someone, would you like a fast metabolism, or would you like a slow metabolism? Everybody's going to be like, oh, I'd like a faster metabolism. I'd like to be able to burn more calories just without doing anything extra. Okay, this is the way to do it. I think if we communicate it like that, I think we'll have a chance. Mm -hmm. Versus the this burns because it used to be look people used to measure a workout by calories burned. In fact, that's how they sell cardio equipment. You get on there. Yep. And how many calories I burned? Oh, that means it was the most effective. Or and they start equating that to like your menu and burgers and being at you know the Cheesecake Factory. Well, if I, I burn five hundred extra calories, you know I can eat this. <laughs> yeah. So I think if we if we sell the you know speeds up your metabolism message, I think people will start to kind of come over a little bit. And and it's it's changing. I tell you what, you know, it's a, here's a funny thing too. When 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 Doug and I first put together the marketing for Maps Anabolic, first of all, the name is not female friendly, right? It has anabolic in the title. <laughs> it talks all about building muscle. Yeah. It's got all those heavy lifts. It's me in there talking. It's not some 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 woman, but I did know that it's look pretty dude heavy. I gotta push this message. I gotta push the right message and not cater to the bullshit message. And the irony now, I, I think we might have we might have more women on Maps Anabolic than men, or maybe at least half. Yeah. Which when I first came when we first came out with it, I was like, ooh, this will be interesting to Seems see. Seems surprising, but it really isn't because mm -hmm. of what they have in the market, you well, know, sold to them. When it comes to it, the results, that, let's be honest, it with is. our experience, it w it will benefit women more than it'll benefit men. Mm -hmm. For mm -hmm. a, as a, if we're looking at a total From a contrast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. Like because women have been sold the toning, Thigh high rat, high reps, circuit yeah. training. For years Cardio, and years, yeah, for sure. For yeah, for years and years and years. So, and it's not to say that it, it's not incredibly beneficial for most men too. It's just that contrast. But there's a, such yeah. a great contrast with women that you know our women clients that go through it. It's like holy shit, yeah. game changer. And so that's finally why, my body's changing. Which is why I think it, it, it's. And this is like when you when you know you've done really well. We pat ourselves on the back here, like business wise, right? When it's organically grown because it's the results. Like we, we don't ha we didn't have to push all kinds of advertising when we first started this business because 
we knew that if five women picked this program up and they started following it, that minimum four or five of them were going to be blown away from it. Yeah, things are changing too because you remember, you guys remember when we first started how we had to make the case for full body workouts? Remember that? Yeah, we had to have that debate. Yeah, right. Nobody's having that debate anymore. I think, and, and the, <laughs> it really is. It really is. I think people are realizing like training the body more frequently. It's not really the full body is a great way to break it up when you do it this way, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. Really, it's about training muscles more frequently than once a week, right? Rather than doing the one day a week and hammer yourself, wait till the following week to hit that same muscle group. It's about more frequency. That's not a debate really anymore. Well, once we started to kind of notice that, like it was like gaining less uh, opposition, like we come up with split. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, I, I love that, you know, just because there's that whole dogmatic sort of uh, yeah. stick with um, one thing that you've tried to um, put out there and really aggressively kind of change people's minds with, but we're not married to that concept. Yeah. Well, no, even when we were pushing full body, we were pushing it because a majority of people would benefit of it, but no one was ever saying that it's superior for all people than it no. is, than a split is. No, nope, even the beginning. That was yeah. never part of the Right, message, because yeah. if you're somebody, I mean, I, I, the, I follow, like when we, when we look at the programming that's put into split, that most closely resembles the way I train for a show. Mm-hmm. But when I trained for a show, I had also put in all the MAPS anabolic type of work beforehand. Mm-hmm. I built up to that. And, I, and I've made that consistency before I step into a program that's asking me to be in the gym six yeah. days a it's week. It's also important to, to communicate this. Like some, Someone might hear that and say, well, I'm just going to skip that part and go right to the part that you're doing now because you're advanced. What doesn't work. No. It doesn't work that way. You can't, no. if you skip and jump to something, your body will actually not progress. Not only not, only not progress as fast, but in many cases... Well, it goes back to what we always say. Yeah, we're we're always trying to do as little as possible to elicit the mm-hmm. most amount of change. Mm-hmm. And if that's... Why would I want to jump right away to what we would consider an advanced program of ours when I know I could reap a ton of benefits from the foundational program? Here's, here's, what, yep. here's what's most exciting, because now the, the program's now been available. The original right, Maps in a Box has been available now for two and a half years at least. Um, and... Uh, What's most exciting for me is I think people are finally starting to discover the importance of the consistency with the trigger sessions. Mm -hmm. Because I knew that that would be the one thing that people would kind of, you know, sometimes I do them, sometimes I don't. And now that people have done it, gone through it enough times, I'm starting to get messages where people are like, oh shit, when I do them every day, three times a day on the off days, that makes a big difference. I can definitely see how people used it as an afterthought. Like it was something that was a sort of in-betweener, didn't put a lot of emphasis on it, um, you know, didn't try it three times a day uh, because that might have felt like, well, I don't know if I can do that or, Mm -hmm. you know, I can do maybe once. But, you know, really just like going through it to the T, it it, it makes such an impact. Huge, huge difference in fat loss and in muscle gain. The fat loss, because you you do three trigger sessions a day, you're doing an additional – 20 to 30 minutes of activity because it's divided up, right? Five to 10 minutes each time. So you end up burning body fat. The anabolic signal that it sends, that one of the things that it does do is it helps your body want to take calories and put them to muscle and take some and bring in some fat. And and what that does is that's also reducing the potential metabolic adaptation or the slowing down of the metabolism that just lots of cardio may end up doing. Um, So it's got all these... Well, really, awesome dual re- benefits. Really, what adaptation is is the body preparing for something that it's going to get hit with again because yeah. you keep telling it that this is going to be a regular thing. So, what's what better than to prepare the body for more muscle than to continually to be sending this signal yeah. that it's going to have to do work? Yeah, and that's where the yeah. acronym comes from. That's right. where the the you know MAP stands for Muscular Adaptation Programming System. I, adaptation is when you're working out, your goal ultimately, unless your goal is just to enjoy the time you're spending working out and you which is nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with that either but at the end of the day you know what people work out for start working out for is they want their body to change they want to get stronger more fit whatever and that's all adaptation that's all it is it's just an adaptation process and so the goal is how do i get my body to adapt in the most effective way possible that's it mm-hmm. that's all it is it's not how hard i can work out it's not how sore i can get it's not how much I can beat my body up, unless those things are what get your body to adapt in a more effective way. None of that fucking matters. All that matters is what can I do to get my body to adapt in the most effective way possible. And that's why I wanted to put adaptation uh, in the acronym, or, or you know, that's why I wanted to put it in the name of the program, so we could start to communicate that message rather than the message of 
how sore did you get, you know? Yeah. Or how hard did you work out? Or you want beast mode all the time. Like, that's not fucking, if your body's not changing. It's not changing. Like, what does that matter? There's right. no, yeah. You know? Right. Unless the whole purpose is to just have There's a beast no mode workout, which every once in a while. Well, this it's has okay. been, it's been great, dude. This has been, this is the first time ever since we've started Mind Pump that we ran a 50% off sale on the program all month long. And we've, we've sold more units this month than we have ever sold before. So I'm really excited. We're going to have a wave of people oh. coming through that are running the foundation. Lots of new users, man. It's exciting. And I'm excited that a lot of the people doing it are, what I'm seeing right now are people who first started, who now just started listening to us. And then I'm also getting a lot of uh, women who are like, okay, I want to speed up my metabolism. Like, mm. fuck yes. Like mm -hmm. you're starting to hear the message. Like this is perfect. Because right. the build muscle message was easy to communicate. That one's a little harder, yeah. and we're seeing a lot more of that. And so I know we're, we're directing people in the right direction, so it's pretty exciting. And I think when this airs, I know the promotion is still going on, but Doug, uh, is, that's that's correct? There are two days left when this airs? That's correct. Okay, so so you're listening to this episode. You have two days to get MAPS Anabolic for half off, which under 60 bucks, and you get full access to the program uh, you also, when for you, life. You also, when you get that, when you get the program, a lot of people don't know this, is you get – an option. As soon as you buy it, a, a thing will pop up and offer you 50% off the forum access. So for under a hundred bucks, you can pretty much get the our what we call our foundational program, then access the forum, which I highly recommend to anybody who's like at all even hesitant to get started on a program because they're nervous of, oh, I don't know if I'll be able to do it, or I'm scared about form. Yeah. Or, that's what really the, the forum is really designed to support all of the programs and design it's we've built this community over the last three and a half years there's all kinds of brilliant minds in there a lot of the guests that you guys have heard on this show as far as some of the phds that we've had on here they're inside there so they're in there answering and helping and, and answering questions we're in there all the time we have people post videos of their movement so you could post a video of you doing some of the exercises from the program. Within minutes, you'll have a response from either one of us or another professional that will get on there and then help you and coach you through that. So don't forget about that. I think a lot of we don't talk about that a lot, but when you buy any of our programs and when you do that, we automatically give you an offer. It's to like get, an instant support system. Yeah, hundred mm -hmm. percent. Excellent. Uh, also, we have a lot of free guides. So if you when we give out lots of free information, so if you don't want to buy anything or whatever, you just want more good information from Mind Pump. Go to mindpumpfree.com. And then you can also check out our social media pages uh, on Instagram. My page is Mind Pump Sal. Adam is Mind Pump Adam. And Justin is Mind Pump Justin. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.